we are all interested to see positive changes in our personal life and equally people long for this world to change positively. People can be very active towards that end. People might even give their lives. And here we are looking into what difference our prayers and our faith can make. Today we want to look into another key scripture on faith. When I had used this oil pastel sketch to visualize an important aspect of faith, I mentioned that I had done that same zine previously. So this sketch was done two and a half weeks previously. And you can see it is equally wild. You can see here things become more clarified. And this here is still much more raw. In front there is that laying tree disappearing in this one. I must say I like how this, this is so very wild and so authentic in a way. It's about, about postcard size. And I use it because, again, talking about faith. So just being consistent with the images and more easily finding the topics that go together. Here also bridge with bridge. Okay, another key scripture on faith. Truly, I say to you that whoever says to this mountain, take yourself away and cast yourself into the sea, and who does not waver in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will come to pass, whatever he says will be done for him. Therefore I say to you, whatever you ask when you pray, believe that you will have it, and it will be done for you. Okay, we are in Mark 11, and we want to especially look at verse 24. So, Dindale published the New Testament in 1535. He says here, believe that you will have it, and it will be done for you. And the most up-to-date King James Bible says, believe that you receive them. And the New International Version has believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Here it's perfect. Here you already have received it in your vision. King James simply believe that you receive. It's happening. It will happen. Actually, it's a very significant difference. You see, there are so many Bible translations, and each Bible translation is different to the other. But this difference, believe that you receive them, versus believe that you have received it, this difference is caused by different source manuscripts. Source manuscripts are these ancient manuscripts, handwritten in Greek language for the New Testament, most of them written about 1500 years ago. And the multitude of those source manuscripts can be classified into these three main groups, the Textus Receptors, the Byzantine Majority Text, and the Alexandrian Text. So simply put, the majority 
of the text is Byzantine and the textus receptus is very close to that maturity text. It's in a way part of it. And the textus receptus has long time been highly respected and the King James Version was translated from that. William Tyndale translated from that. If we take a look into our historical chart, here up 1517, Martin Luther, the Reformation, and then his first Bible came out 1534, and the Matthews Bible came out 1537. You see, Tyndale's New Testament has been incorporated into the Matthew's Bible. The first King James Version, 1611, that is almost a century later. And that's a very interesting story about that translation. We have to talk about that another time. However, the multitude of Bible translations, that was much later. Following the discovery of Codex Sinaiticus in 1844. And if you haven't yet done so, here on my channel, this playlist Untold History of the Bible. Yeah, this playlist is definitely interesting to watch. You see the power that had burned alive the early Bible translators is perfectly fine with the multitude of modern Bible translations that are based upon the Alexandrian text or critical text. I would say the most interesting documentary here in Untold History of the Bible, I would say is the second video, Tears Among Wheat, despite they're all interesting to watch. The fourth is here teaching by Walter Feit. He talks about that and also in the third documentary here, it's talked about Alexandria, Egypt, and that this was a center, a place of occultism in the ancient time, which appears to be the reason why the Alexandrian text got corrupted. And here in this recent video, we had already a little bit talked about how the Antichrist power relates to these ancient religions or to occultism. So knowing that, what's the difference now between belief that you have received it versus a belief that you receive them? I would say that belief that you have received this, it is very much like that law of attraction teaching. There is much to focus on the receiving on the, I mean on, I have received it, I have received it, I have received it. So you're visualizing, I have received it, and the focus is much on the gift. And here, believe that you receive is more like now I'm praying, I'm communicating with my Father in heaven and the relationship to God. And I am trusting, I will receive, I will receive, it's relaxed. And the relationship with God is the priority. So the untold history of the Bible is an important subject to know about and to make sure you are studying from an uncorrupted Bible version. Nevertheless, we see throughout the whole Bible that Faith does play a very important role. If half of Christendom agrees with Satanists that evil must come, don't you think their faith is without impact? Instead, Moses wouldn't consider himself righteous if he wouldn't plead with God on behalf of the people. 
and we are supposed to have a desire, let your kingdom come. So please help me by testing this truth. And if you are convinced, please help spreading this news so people will join us in the desire and prayer for God's kingdom, for what is good, and less people on the side of evil who just anticipating and waiting and having faith for more and more evil to come. So please join me in prayer. So Father God, we do praise you today also. We come to you today. We are in your presence and we thank you, Father God, that your kingdom is coming. Father, we can trust you. And the situation is not hopeless. You said here in Ezekiel 22, verse 30, that you need only one man, one person who can stand in the gap. And that would already make the difference that you wouldn't have to destroy. So we can join in this prayer. Let your kingdom come. And we pray, let all evil come to nothing. Deliver us from evil. We pray again today. And you are powerful and you listen to our prayers. You hear our prayers. We pray also for this upcoming week that you will be with us again. We will experience you, your faithfulness. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.